Howard? Well, we asked our viewer, Kyra Bransom, who has type 2 diabetes, to try out Patrick Hofer's low-GL diet. Here's how she got on. My name is Kyra Bransom. I'm 37 years old, and in February 2007, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. I first realised there was something wrong with my glucose levels in 2004 when I had a cold that I couldn't shake, and a flatmate suggested that I go to the doctors and have it checked out. The doctor then decided that she was going to give me some blood tests, just routine, to see what was happening, um, and it came back that I was borderline diabetic. My initial reaction was one of shock. It's one of those things that you never think will happen to you. After starting my medication, I the fuzzy-headedness cleared up pretty much straight away, and I did feel better within myself, but I felt well, but I was well because I was on medication. I wasn't well because of the way that I was eating, especially. I thought it would be really hard to adjust to the food that I'm eating now, but I'm actually really enjoying it. After four weeks of being on Patrick's diet, I've seen a dramatic improvement in my skin. My concentration is back fully, I don't have bloatedness, I don't have indigestion anymore, I have a completely clear head and I've also managed to halve my metformin. In the quieter moments I do still get a bit scared that I have diabetes but I'm very determined to turn this into a positive situation one way or another. Very interesting. Joined now by Kyra, by Patrick Holford and diabetes expert Dr Sarah Jarvis. You look well. How are you feeling? Fantastic. Yeah, really, feel really, really good. Well. And you're really keeping well. up the whole kind of the different diets. No problem. Was it tough to, to change your eating habits? No, not at all. Really? Actually, I, I was very motivated to do something about of the diabetes course. in the first place and it was so easy to do Patrick's diet that I just fell into it and it's, I'm happy to stay on it. Right, so this is for life. Oh yeah, absolutely. This is for life. This yeah. is what you're going to do for mm -hmm. life. And has it, do you, in your experience, do you think that it's helped your diabetes? Um, well, I have seen, uh, I mean, my, my blood glucose results kind of speak for themselves, right. really. I mean, it, it's it's healthy and, mm. you know, it's under control, which is fantastic. And what's really good is you're taking control of your illness. It's not taking control of yeah. you. You know, that's the thing. You're actually doing something for yourself. Yes. Instead of just kind of getting medication and taking it, which is which is fine, yeah, of course. You must yes. do that. Yeah. But at the same time, you, you're able to kind of change what's happened to you, which is really good. Yeah. So, Patrick, how does it work? What's, what's happened here? Well, basically, you, you want to eat foods that release their sugar content slowly. This is called a low GL or glycemic low diet. Right. So having things like oats for breakfast is very good, oat cakes, anything with oats is fantastic. Right. Um, fruit is good for you, but you need to be selective. So mm. berries, plums, apples, they're good. Right. Eating protein with carbohydrates, so in other words, if you have rice, you have fish. Mm. If you have potatoes, you have meat. And ideally, a little less potatoes, a little less rice. Right. And that's part of it. The other mm. part is there's a mineral called chromium that a lot of us don't get enough of. And diabetics in particular, if they supplement more chromium, that helps control the blood sugar. Mm. And so too does cinnamon. Really? So, so the combination okay. of, of a low GL diet plus some cinnamon right. and chromium tends to make a big difference. In Kyra's case, her blood sugar has gone from 11. Mm. Uh, above 7 is, is, is sort of diabetes uh, you know, risk. Right, 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 right. And she's now down to about 5.4. Oh, okay. So it's really dropped a lot. Are you still on medication, though, for diabetes? Yeah. You're no, not. No, no. Um, right. um, when I saw my consultant at the hospital, he, he gave me guidelines to follow in order to take myself off okay. the medication. Okay. And I am now off medication right. completely. But you need to be careful about that, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sarah, what do we think about this? Well, it's basically common sense, all apart yes. from the supplements, which I'm afraid are complete nonsense. The diet itself is something we've known about for decades. Right. In fact, there's a diet called the portfolio diet, which is very commonly um, used over mm. in America. People can reduce their cholesterol by about 20% over the course of a mm. year. Another third of people can reduce it by about 15%. Another third can reduce it by about 10%. What do they do? It's common sense. It's a Mediterranean diet. Right. You eat normal Mediterranean-style food. You eat fish, including oily fish, so you mm. get the omega-3. You eat lots of fruit and vegetable and unrefined carbohydrate. You eat oats, which are good for your mm -hmm. cholesterol, and they're absorbed relatively slowly. It's all absolute common sense, apart from the chromium and the vitamin supplements, which are nonsense. But can People should be getting what they need from, from their food, diet from and food. not from expensive but supplements. Is, I have to say this is wrong because, I mean, this is a paper that just came out, 15 studies on chromium uh, supplements at a level that you will not eat, and 13 of those 15 studies show that it helps diabetics. I totally agree the diet is important, mm. um, but what's really being ignored is the proper randomised controlled trials that are showing See, additional not No, I'm absolutely not. Works. Those yeah. studies were completely flawed 
as were the ones on cinnamon. The point yeah. is that if you do the right things, well, there's absolute evidence for it. There are thousands of consultants and doctors across the country who know that if you improve your diet, and mm. God knows, I wish people would, you said 2.2 million people in this country yeah. have got diabetes. 2.2 million people have been diagnosed. Uh, Another million probably have got they, it they, and don't they know don't about know it. Until maybe the sort of sure. symptoms we're looking about this being an apple rather than a pear is getting minor infections, needing to wee more often, maybe losing weight. So of course, people think they're actually they're doing well, ah. but in fact, it's because they're beginning to develop diabetes. Now, if you can lose 10% of your body weight, you can cut your total cholesterol by 10%, you can cut your bad mm. cholesterol by 15%, and you will halve your, your so average blood sugar. So it's common sense, it's a common sense diet, Absolutely isn't it? Absolutely common sense. Because diabetes is a it's huge really, problem now, It's isn't a it? vast problem, and I think it's desperately dangerous that people like Patrick, with no medical qualifications at all, are telling people like Kira that they have cured their diabetes. They absolutely have So would you say On don't average, go off your medication? Even, no, if, you, even if, you get, if you get diabetes now and you start eating in a sort of healthier way yeah. and you start this diet, you must still be on your medication? No, no, you don't need to stay on your medication, you but you do need to start, take the standard precautions. You don't need to take blood sugar lowering medication. Right. But what you need to bear in mind is that at least half of people who've got diabetes, I'm afraid, Kira, have already got evidence of complications. Uh -huh. by the time they're diagnosed because these symptoms are so slow mm. because they take a long time mm. to come on. The, the figures that Patrick's given aren't even correct. He had to ask me about them earlier on because he didn't know what they were. Is, so I think we is, need to um, bear in mind that an, there is a huge amount of medical research. Would you, di would you diagnose Kira, Kira whose um, blood sugar is now 5.4, has no symptoms? Would you diagnose her with diabetes? I wouldn't diagnose her in you, but you. the point is if I looked, for instance, for evidence of complications, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you do studies looking at the back of people's eyes and so on, we know mm -hmm. that at least 50% of people who've got diabetes have already got complications by the time they're up with this diet, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't diagnose well. her from yeah. her diet, from right. her blood sugar, right. but mm. I would be able to diagnose mm. her by looking in her eyes and by checking her. So kidneys something's and so on. made a big difference. You it's think a it's a diet. diet, but I the know, point is she's diet. better. Mm. And uh, how much weight have you lost? I've, oh, well, since February, I've lost three stones, and exactly. I have been, so I have been checked yeah. for my eyes right. and yeah. my kidneys, and Fantastic. I've had all those done. And that's absolutely brilliant because there's every reason to believe that if you can stay at that level, you won't get the complications. When you keep your blood sugar to below pre-diabetes levels, you stop the ma microvascular complications, the blindness and so on, from progressing. Well, this, we'll put all of this into our website because it's absolutely fascinating. Good for you to yeah. have done this. And actually, it's not easy to change your, no, your eating habits. It's changing your life. But you, you have changed your life. Yeah. Thank you all very, very much indeed. We'll take a very quick, quick break now. When we get back, well, we've got uh, an exclusive preview of this summer's must-see movies. Film critic James King is here with his pick of the best. And tonight is the final of the...